First Kings chapter three, Solomon, verse one. Solomon made infinity. That's a relation contract by marriage with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now this is the first association with Egypt since the Exodus. And it's a bride for Solomon. And what Solomon is doing here, he's violating the law. And we'll get down to verse 3, then we'll look up. We've got a, lot, a few passages to look at. This is not the only beginning. And took Pharaoh's daughter, the Egyptian wife, and brought her into the city of David, Jerusalem, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until, until those days. Well, there was a tabernacle. I don't know if the sheets were good enough. I mean, that's how you want to describe the place. Curtains. That's what David said. David said, I dwell in cedar in the house of the Lord. And the Lord's tabernacle stands in curtains. Is that not good enough? And Solomon loved the Lord, recorded by the Holy Spirit, walking in the statues of David, his father. So what his father did, he done. Only he sacrificed, burnt, he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. So only he sacrificed, that is a P.S. That's not what he's supposed to do. The sacrifices were to be at the brazen altar. The in incense was to be in the holy place. Now David had part in the priesthood somehow, some way. Not Solomon. That is not his office. Now what we're going to look at is some things here. And then we'll move on to verse 4. But James 4.4. 4. James 4.4. 4. All in the New Testament. And this would be the charge later on of Solomon with Egypt. Now the Jews were specific in the law by God. You were to marry your own family, your own tribe. For Solomon that would have been Judah. So verse 4-4. Four, four, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God, hatred, unfriendliness whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God well here he's got an Egyptian wife God kept telling those Jews don't go back to Egypt don't go back to Egypt it's in the law Deuteronomy 17 15 17 15 Deuteronomy this is the law this is what uh, King Solomon's under. Verse 14 will start. And the thing is, as we read it, we'll read this again. But we're going we're to start the game because of the Egyptian wife. Verse 14, when thou art come into the land, they are, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, he's given them, and shall possess it. They're in the land, they're dwelling in the land. There's a place called the city of David. And shall dwell there, that's what they're doing. And shall say, I will set a king over me. Like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Only among the brethren. Shall thou set over thee. Set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee. Which is not thy brother. It's funny how we read this verse today. In our Bible study. The only king you can have. It has to be of your brethren. Alright. That's, that's Solomon. He's of David. But he shall not multiply horses to himself. He will. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Where would you get the bride of Pharaoh? You have to go back to Egypt. To return to, to the end that he should multiply horses. He'll do that. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Do not go back to Egypt. This is Deuteronomy 17. The date here, they say, is B.C. 1451. The date 
under Kings is BC 1014. And God told him before Solomon was ever even thought of, you're not to go back that way. He goes back for a wife. To the end that you shall multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. He'll do that. David did that. That his heart turned not away. That's exactly what's going to happen. We'll get to that later with, with Solomon. Neither shall he greatly multiply himself silver and gold. We're going to see we're going to read this over and over and over as we go through first Kings. Or you might read it so much it might even become a memory verse to us by recording. And it shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom, which he's doing now, that he shall write a copy of the law in a book, out of which is before the priest, the Levite. The priest will go to the king and say, Sir, Genesis, start copying. Let me know when you're done. All right, here's the second half of Genesis. Genesis part one, you know, give it to you in part. And scrolls. All right, now here's the scroll of Exodus. Let me know when you're done with that. Well, how much you got? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's the law. The king was to do that. Now, let me ask you, what king do you have today as far as the word of God? Do you not have the King James Version? A Bible that's written by a king? Do you know what James today, the name would be in the Old Testament Hebrew? It would be Jacob. Would that be interesting? So we have a Bible written by kings and not just scholars, but by a king authorized. And it's nowhere recorded for David, for Saul, or for any king I have not seen. Ever that this part of this verse has ever been acknowledged. It says, shall write a copy of this law, a book out of that which is before the priest of Levi, and shall be with him. He shall read therein all the days of his life. The king is commanded the daily Bible reading. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God. Reading your Bible will get you to fear God. And we have 66 books. To fear the Lord his God. To keep all the words of this law and these statutes. Now so far Solomon's doing that. But he'll break away. His heart be not lifted up above his brethren as it did with Saul. And we're going to stop right there. Now, Nehemiah 13. You need to look at, lay some groundwork of Solomon. Nehemiah 13. Verse 23. In those days also saw I Jews that married wives of Ashdod, that's Philistine, of Ammon, of Moab, that's of Lot. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. I contended with them and cursed them. Nehemiah, bad boy, and smoke certain of them. Nehemiah, man, he's punching them. For what? Intermarriage. Intermarriage. Black and white, and plucked off their hair. <laughs> I've seen a preacher do that. <laughs> and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters un unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? It's only going to get worse with Solomon. Yet, among many nations, as was there no king like him. Besides the fact that that sin, God was still merciful and graceful to Solomon, but he had a sin problem. What was his sin problem? Women. No king like him, who was beloved of his God. And God had made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish woman cause him to sin. That's what you guys have done. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil? To transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? And when we get 
as we move on with Solomon, it's going to be described as strange wives. Now, the strange wives, and they're not having eyeballs in the middle of their head and a third arm, and a, you know, it's Gentiles. So, we see allegiance with Egypt that God never wanted. Egypt has now come back into the picture. It hasn't been in the picture since Exodus. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. Now we just read that that only he sacrificed burnt incense in high, in high places. That's, that's not where you're supposed to go. You're supposed to go to that tabernacle. You're supposed to go to the priest. But there was no building. They didn't have walls. They didn't have stone. They didn't have bricks. Didn't have nails. David said that curtain tabernacle was there. Some people are not content with renting a building for a church. Some people might even get offended that if you have church outside. Some people definitely get offended, but oh, you have a church in your living room. How many churches, how many uh, evangelists, how many missionaries have started such a church somewhere in this world where it started on a couch? It started with a man, his wife, and his children. They went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Not just a high place. You know, for God, it's got to be the great high place. But it's not the proper place. We had churches when we rented built, they would they rented from the Masons. And I would went to the preacher and say, you know, this place is dedicated to Satan. The worship of another Jesus Christ. And we are holding worship here for Jesus Christ, and we are giving our money that we give to Jesus Christ over to the satanic Masonic Lodge. Does not that, of course it didn't. It's a place for God. It's not where God wants. A thousand burnt offerings. That's a lot. Later on, he'll have a thousand wives. He traded his offerings in for wives. A thousand burnt offerings, and then later on, a thousand wives. It started with one, one Egyptian wife. Did Solomon offer upon that altar? So there's an altar there. It doesn't say if it's an altar that he made, but there's an altar. And giving the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. So Solomon falls asleep and God appears to him. So God is showing, I'm with you. And God may work with you. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. That's a blank check. If that's not ever a blank, God says anything. He just says, ask. Whatever you want. Now, when God put this question to Solomon, it's already that Solomon is mature enough for this question. That God already knows what Solomon's already going to ask. And Solomon said, Thou shalt show unto thy servant, David my father, great mercy. You, cook, you took care of my dad. I'm going to rely on you to take care of me too. According as he walked before thee in truth, that's David. And in righteousness, that's David. And in uprightness of heart with thee, that's David. And thou, that's God, has kept him. This Thou has kept for him this great kindness, this kingdom, me on the throne. The ability of the temple is going to be built. That thou has given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. So here I am, Lord. And it's not prideful, it's not boasting. But you gave my father a son, me. For this throne. 
And now, O oh Lord, my God, my God, my God. There's a lot of places in the Bible where the, you, you pray to the Lord, thy God. Solomon puts it down. That's my God. Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. So, David didn't do nothing. All David did was when they put the horn of oil upon him and had him march through the streets upon the mule, all David did is what God told him to do. And I am but a little child, and a lot of people quiver on that one. But that's his humbleness. He's not a child, but he's like, when you have put me in the affairs that I am today, I'm I mean, I, I have nothing. I have no strength. Compared to what I, where I am now by you, God. Humble. I know not how to get out or come in. Go out or come in. So he's seeking God's guidance. He said, well, why didn't God say anything about that Egyptian wife? He never said anything about it. He never said, God, what do you think about that? God, what do you think about me being here in Gibeon? Where I should be at the... There was a preacher one time. He had somebody in his congregation. And the guy just got in massive trouble. And got in massive trouble. And massive trouble. And finally he went to... He was talking to the pastor. And he said, well... The pastor said, I knew you'd do that. And the guy said, well, why didn't you tell me? You never asked. And we've got to call on God in all things. We've got to seek God. Because we don't know what we're doing. We don't know where to go. We don't know what and how and everything. But God does. We don't even know what's going to happen later on in the day. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, Jews. Which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. Even though David tried. <laughs> Get away from that mess. <laughs> I'm God, I can't number them. Simple as that. I am not going to make that same mistake my dad did. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Heart, not brain, not mind. To judge thy people. Judge not, least he be judged. What's the judgment? That I may discern between good and bad. Lord, I gotta make judgment on this throne. I gotta know the truth and I gotta know the lie. For thy people and for your testimony. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? God is. And God has got to use a man to do the judging. You're not going to have a pity quarrel, which we'll see next. And God's going to leave his heavenly abode to settle a pity quarrel. And yet when you got that pity quarrel in a courtroom, you guys say, I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And that judge is, I got to direct this courtroom. I got to direct this case. I've got to judge according to what God has to say and no one else. It's seeking God, good and bad. You can't have a proper judgment of good and bad when you've got people saying evil is good and good is evil. That's not God. And Solomon is seeking for the fact is, i got to know what's right. And i got to know what's wrong. Who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life. Oh Lord God, let me live forever. He didn't say that. Fifty years old. If I would have been young like Solomon, I would ask the Lord, Lord, let me live a long life. And I'd be regretting it by now. 
pain, suffering, trial. Neither has thou, neither has asked riches for thyself. Oh Lord God, give me millions of dollars and billions of dollars. Give me all the coins and silver. He didn't ask for that. Many would. You may use money foolishly. You, if you do not have the knowledge of good and bad and judgment, you're not going to know how to use that money. Solomon's right. Like, all right. As far as my life, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I'll leave that in your hand, Lord. As far as riches, I don't know what to do with riches. I don't know how to spend money. So I'll leave that to you, Lord. And has, nor has asked the life of thy enemy. Now, so far, we, as far as what we see, Solomon does not have any enemies as we recorded yet. But there's got to be some people. And Solomon hasn't turned to God. We well, see that guy over there. He hates me. Kill him. Kill him. Solomon hasn't done that. Have you read the Psalms of David? His father? Lord God, go get him. <laughs> God, chase my enemies. God, throw my enemies in hell. That's where Solomon differs. Read the Psalms of David and read Proverbs in Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, the books written by Solomon himself, and look at. <coughs> now Solomon will tell you the truth about enemies. He will tell you what the, the desires of the enemies are. David's like, go get them. Go kill them. Strike them down. Get them. <coughs> Solomon's not like that. Solomon will use wisdom. David uses the sword. That's why David couldn't build a tabernacle. Solomon uses wisdom so Solomon can look at blueprint and Solomon can look and say, okay, that goes right there. This is, okay. Wisdom. But has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. He wants to be a proper judge. He wants it good and bad again. That pleases the Lord. Behold, I, God, have done according to thy words. Understand you get it. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. Heart, not head. The heart is relations to God. Something's missing. Knowledge is not missing. I mean, knowledge is missing. There are three things. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And God does not mention knowledge. I'm going through the Bible right now. And I can't say nothing right now. But. There's only a few people who got knowledge, wisdom and understand. One of them is Jesus Christ. I'm going to say again. The devil has. One of those three. He's got two of the three. He's missing one himself. The Bible records that Daniel is wise. Wiser than Satan. An understanding heart. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any wise like unto thee, arise like unto thee. So throw all away all your wisdom people. This man's a great, these, these Greek sophisticators and, and bolsters and talkers and the people of college, God says throw them out. Neither after thee. So that goes from 1114 BC all the way to 2000. 18, 2000, whenever God shows up. No one's ever going to be as smart as Solomon. This would wipe out the men that came to Job. That were before Solomon. This would be even more wise than the wise men that came searching for Jesus. In the Bible, the book of God, the wisest man ever outside of Jesus Christ is Solomon. And probably what you read is Daniel would be next. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not had, both riches. Okay? So that gold and silver that he'll get, God says, I'll give it to you. Where are you? Where is the borderline? Because he gets much gold and much silver. 
and honor. Kings and queens and, and merchants will come to Solomon for guidance. So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So you're there. You're the one. And if thou, if, if conditional, if thou will walk in my ways, and he'll stop. I'm going to tell you already about Solomon. He'll stop. And keep my statutes and my commandments. He won't. As thy father David did walk. You mean the adulterer and the murderer? David had a place in Abraham's bosom. Solomon is going to serve other gods. He's going to have all outlandish women. But he has a place in Abraham's bosom. There was no pride with David. There was no pride with Solomon. But Saul had pride. And Saul is burning in hell today. Pride is also one of them sins that there are no offerings. There is no sacrifice. But it's hard, but you can break away from pride, though. You can get right. It's hard. Then I will lengthen thy days. I'll give you long life. Long life if you do right. But he won't. And Solomon awoke. Behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. See, there it is. It's in Jerusalem. There it is. And offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. So he went back to where he was supposed to. I wasn't supposed to be there. I was supposed to be at that. So he goes back and gets right. Then came there two women that were harlots. This is the first time that word shows up in the Bible. And stood before him. They're in the courtroom. Oh, how dare Solomon have these people here. And the one woman said, Oh, my Lord, speaking to the king, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. I gave birth to a baby. And it came to pass the third day. The third day. Mark that somehow in the Bible. There's a lot of third days. Three days. In the Bible. After that, I was delivered. So within three days, we each of us had a baby. That this woman was delivered also. And we were together. And there was no stranger with us in the house. Save we two in the house. There's only the two of us. That's it. And the two babies. No one else. Okay? And this woman's child... Died in the night. Death. The reason. Because she overlaid it. Baby was laying next to the mother. The mother laid on the baby. And suffocated. She arose at midnight. Mark midnights in your Bible. That shows up a lot too. There's a lot of midnights. A lot of third days. There's stuff to it. I don't know yet. The death angel came through midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing at midnight. And took my son from beside me. While thy handmaid slept. So I'm sleeping. She killed her baby. She comes over to me and takes my baby. And laid it in her bosom. And laid her dead child in my bosom. So she switched babies. She now has the live baby. I have the dead baby. And when I rose up in the morning, in the morning, so second advent reference to what in this passage? I don't know. To give my child suck, you know, feed my child in the morning. Behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, when light comes, you know, here comes light, I can see. Behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. Whatever birthmark or something about that, this is not my child. No way. 
And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, uh, man, wait, hold on. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. I'm getting confused here. Thus they spake before the king. It's my son. No, it's your son. Then my son. Your son. My son. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth. And thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is dead, and my son's is living. They're bickering back and forth. You say it's dead, you say it's live, blah, 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 blah. So, these two women are going at it. My son. No, it's your son. Now, here's the king sitting on the throne of judgment. I wonder if Benaiah is there. Remember him? And we can't mention Benaiah, the, the son of Jehoiada. Who would be standing there? Because that would make you scared. Because the king says now, and the king said, bring me a sword. Now, what do you think those women right now are? We're dead. <laughs> We're both dead. That's it. He don't like us. He didn't want to hear it. We're dead. So there will be Two dead mothers and two dead babies. Problem solved. And they brought a sword before the king. So right now you would think, okay, everybody's dead. Poop. End the problem. And the king said, divide the living child into two. Wow. Now he could just, I don't know who else is in this room, but he just, what did he just say? I wouldn't even think Benaiah, like, I ain't doing that. Divide the baby in two and give half to this to the one and half to the other. Now they gotta think Solomon's now off his rocker. What on earth are you yet yeah, the wisdom that God has given him so quick? Then spank the mother whose the living son was unto the king for her balls, her insides, her love infection, yearned, and that's the only time that word shows up, yearn. For her son. That moment when he said divide that child, she would almost go potty in herself. Her heart would sink down. Her her countenance would change. Her whole life now is no, it's my son. Oh my lord. Give her the living child. And no wise slay. Oh. And there's tears coming from this woman. You're not going to kill my... Just give it to her. Out of love for that child, I'd rather have that woman take the child than to kill it. Now the other woman sitting there, she's got to say something. She's stuck. She's got to be a Peter. i got to open my mouth. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Kill it. That's not a mother. But she has to say something. So that, <laughs> kill it. <laughs> it's not mine. It's really hers, but kill it. I'll take half. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. Now you can imagine that other woman said, Go ahead, divide it. Ah, man, blew it. They got to go home and live with something else. They got to go home. I guarantee someone's moving now. She's the mother thereof. Now what was now think about this courtroom. This story is so it's just told boom 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 boom. Think about those women. Give me a sword. Shouldn't come here. Should just let her have the baby. Now we're all dead. We're harlots, we're nobody in this kingdom. We're all dead. Divide it? That's my son. And all Israel heard the judgment which the king had judged. They feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. And I would not ever see anybody dare walk up to Solomon and say, Judge not easy. <laughs> I would never say that to John. 
But look at this. Look what God has told him. What would you have done? Let's say for whatever case, you became the judge. And here's these two women. There were no footprints. <laughs> there was no, no birth certificate. No features. All you got to say to this woman, this is not my child. That's my child. Nope. This is your child. That's my child. What would you do? And you got all the eyes of Israel looking at you. And this would assume that this is the first and only case Solomon would have. As of now. What a case. Somebody's got to walk out of that, that courtroom happy. Somebody's got to walk out of that courtroom unhappy. That's how it happens. That's life. And Solomon said, God, I got to know the good from the bad. You know what God, you know what Solomon did? He prayed to the Lord and that's the answer he got. You know why you got a crooked, corrupt, corrupt legal system in America today? Because no one's relying on God. They, the people that make the laws don't obey the laws themselves. So how do you expect your citizens to obey the law? Solomon's going to violate the law. It's going to be the wives. And there's going to be chaos. It's going to be chaos. 